Welcome to the Global Health and Nutrition Network Innovation Spotlight Series, part of the Supply Side Global Experience Program. In this episode, we travel to Bangalore, India, visiting farms, labs, and factories to document how Sabinsa Corporation and Semi Labs are applying a farm to finished ingredient process to bring innovative ingredients to market. Join us as we travel about five hours south of Bangalore to explore the fields of Salem and experience of a gathering of more than 200 farmers fighting against synthetic curcumin. We will also sit down with one of our industry's pioneers and see firsthand the R&D and manufacturing process in action through some of Sammy Labs and Sabinsa's facilities. Today uh, we're at Sabinsa and Sammy Labs here in Bangalore. We're going to get a chance to spend some time with Dr. Majid, the founder of the company, but also one of the great innovators in our industry. First, I wanted to start at the beginning with Dr. Muhammad Majid on the importance of working with the farmers who are responsible for growing the crops that enable Sabinsa to bring the highest quality natural ingredients to the market. The most important thing is uh, about sustainability. See, unless the farmers are prompted, promoted and supported, you will not have continuous supply of any of these medicinal plants. See, Mother Earth has given us some, but when there is a global demand, like we are experiencing now, the farmers need to be taken as partners and to be encouraged that they continue to cultivate. Because it's one thing to say farmers are important. So you promise them yes. the, what they're going to get. Absolutely. They're never going to get less than that. Absolutely. But if the market goes up, they share in that? They have a share. Very compelling for us to learn directly from Dr. Majid how Sabinsa and Sammy Labs have built these guarantees in for the farmers. This is something new to us and seems to be a big differentiator for the farmer and Dr. Majid's business. As we learned about this and more in our discussion, we wanted to get on the road and see some of these farms for ourselves. So we got in the car and made a five hour journey to the south and what we saw left us humbled and inspired. So we're halfway to Salem. We left Bangalore a couple of hours ago and we're on our way to go see the grow operation where uh, the curcumin comes from, the, the turmeric fields. We're gonna meet the farmers, talk to them a little bit about what they're going through as they uh, grow this uh, turmeric here in India, uh, what it means to their community and then ultimately uh, what it means to our community as this curcumin comes to market. As we arrived in Salem, we were surprised to find the so-called small gathering of farmers was actually a farmers association meeting to discuss the very real issue of synthetic curcumin impacting the turmeric farmers in the area. Well, we made it here to Salem just in time for the conference against synthetic curcumin, gathering of a couple of hundred farmers and people involved in the trade and some dignitaries to talk specifically about what synthetic curcumin is doing to uh, their farms, their community, the market, the prices, all of that, a lot of passion. As we saw the state president of the Tamil Nadu Farmers Association lead this session, it was incredible to see the commitment and selflessness of this community of farmers coming together to support each other. Many of these farmers have turmeric crops, but there were many others who are not directly impacted by the synthetic curcumin issue, but are here to support their fellow farmers and work for a resolution. As other farmers and supporters joined the stage and shared their individual stories about the impact of synthetic curcumin, we learned details about how their farms are cultivated and nurtured to produce the best possible crops and heard extremely impassioned farmers share the dreadful impact adulteration with synthetic curcumin has had on their farming businesses and on their families, some of which actually broke into song to tell their story. <laughs> spoke to the hearts and minds of their fellow farmers. And came together with common purpose and unity. As the session came to a close, Sabinsa representatives VJ Nair, CEO, and Shaheen Majid, marketing director, addressed the farmers with the same commitments we heard from Dr. Majid, a focus on supporting and investing in the success of the farmers and their crops, which of course enable more success for Sabinsa and the industry as a whole. 
As a follow-on to this short documentary, we will be sharing a deeper look into this synthetic curcumin issue. But for now, our journey will continue as we move on to some of the fields these farmers are responsible for. As you can see, the lush landscape throughout this area is truly beautiful and offers the fertile ground to cultivate the crops that enable Sabinsa to bring quality ingredients to market. So I'm here on one of the uh, many farms in the Salem area where they're growing the turmeric to make the curcumin. Uh, you can see the folks working out in the field, uh, the signs here that say Sabinsa uh, with Dr. Majid's picture on them. Every farm in this area uh, growing turmeric for the Sabinsa curcumin uh, has this sign to indicate that's what it is. Uh, it doesn't look like an extremely large farm here, but uh, there are many of these, uh, thousands of acres all over this area and others that are uh, giving these communities great jobs, uh, great revenue, and uh, giving the global market some great products. As we continued our tour to another turmeric field, I got a chance to speak in depth with Shaheen Majid and relate the curcumin fields back to some of the elements from the Farmers Association meeting, along with what this means to our market as a whole. Well, one of the things is we come out here with a team of scientists to look at the land and look at the viability of the land that's here. Now, not all lands are perfect, but we yeah. help them get to that point where they can start to cultivate and harvest and ultimately make some money yeah. for them and their family. Right. Because we should never let go of the aspects of a farmer. We need that in our community. Though we could have spent the entire day on the turmeric fields, we wanted to get an understanding of the other crops that are driving the success of Sabinsa's ingredient business. I was joined by Vijay Nair and a few others at the Coleus Forscoli fields next to learn more about how Sabinsa's Forskolin comes to us via these crops. So this is uh, Coleus Forscoli, yeah. uh, which is the source of Forskolin from the root Correct. that you uh, sell at Sabinsa as your Forskolin brand. That's Absolutely. Right? right? Absolutely. Yes. So this, however, is no root, obviously. This is the clipping yeah. uh, from next to us, what is the nursery. Right. And this is, again, not where the root comes from. These plants are just for these clippings, Absolutely. which once they turn this more purple color, yeah. right. you can take them, take them to the other farms all around the area and plant them. Yeah. And in six months, they'll be ready for to harvest for the root, root so you can extract the forskolin and bring forskolin to market. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I was curious to get a bit deeper on this, so I asked Shaheen to spend a few more minutes with me discussing how this ingredient is impacting the market. So Shaheen, uh, Coleus Forskoli, the source of Forskolin, uh, which is your branded ingredient, Forslane, uh, the primary benefit, the primary people reason that people use it is for lean body mass, which I think is interesting because in the industry, weight loss has been a huge uh, area for a long time. But yes. most weight loss that we've seen for years is with all these heavy stimulants out there. That's right. Uh, Forslane doesn't work that way. Well, when we discovered the true benefit of Forslane, Coleus Forskoli, we realize it's almost an ephedrine free type of stimulant, right? Right. There is no stimulant, there is no ephedrine, but you can still get a kick and get the lean body mass that you need. Right. So it's weight management, but amplified. Yeah, a totally different kind of weight management. That's right. All from right here in the field. That's right. Natural, grown right here That's in, right. in Salem, uh, here in India. Here in India. Uh, employing lots of people to bring what uh, the U.S. market wants, which is a way to get lean body mass. Well, that's what we wanted also. We just didn't want to be a trader or a supplier of an ingredient, right? Yeah. That's not what Sabinsa. Sabinsa is really known for being hands-on. And right. now we're not just in research hands-on, but right here in the fields that you're with me today. Yeah, it all you starts here. You can see the here farms and, and the farmers. Yeah, and it ends up after going through the whole R&D process and getting to the market. This, this is the start of the innovation. That's right. You guys add what you add to, to all of it. Correct. Uh, and at the end of the day, we end up with a great product on the market that not only is a market success, but it's helping people be healthier in a healthy way uh, as they search for these weight management solutions. Oh, if you want true transparency, think about the farmers and the farms that you've been on today, yeah. all the way to a finished formula that contains forest lean. Yeah. You've seen the whole spectrum now, John. So as we consider this spectrum that Shaheen mentions, it made me want to learn more about the R&D stages and the manufacturing process Sabinsa goes through. I got a chance to ask Dr. Majid a few questions on this topic and also had a chance to tour some of these working areas in both the R&D labs and in the manufacturing facilities. What you saw here today is my basic conviction that R&D is the basis of any successful business. Without research and development, no company is going to survive on a long-term basis. You can survive for a few years but long term, if you look at it, it is R&D, research and development, and continuous investment into research and development, which is what I have practiced. And uh, I can see 
that I have made very successful products based on my research. And I continue to see in the foreseeable future that we will bring in very innovative products into the market from our R&D. Okay. And what you saw today, John, the, what my people are working on today, may be a product we will introduce seven, eight, ten years down the line. What they developed the last five years is now going through clinical and getting ready to get into the market. Okay. So it's a continuous process. It is six to eight percent of our gross income goes into this one. And, you know, there is no substitute for R&D. Throughout the tour of Sabinta's R&D facility, I got the chance to speak with a number of PhD scientists who are responsible for applying their intelligence to the innovation coming out of the labs. This is no small feat, as hundreds of doctors collaborate together via state-of-the-art technology to test and define and redefine the finished ingredients that impact the health and wellness of the world. I wanted to get Dr. Majid's thinking about investments here as well. Especially looking at uh, the equipment that you have and that you've invested in, yeah. uh, some of which I frankly haven't seen in, in a lot of other places, yeah. uh, and that's a major investment. I saw one in particular, the uh, nuclear magnetic resonance machine, the NMR, yes. uh, which is yeah. a uh, very powerful tool yes. to have, and again, one that is not very common no. uh, in the no. industry, no. Uh, and a Unless big investment. It's a big investment, and also, you have not seen another one that is a coupled version of uh, LCMSMS and GCMSMS together. Mm -hmm. What that machine does is uh, pick up any kind of residual pesticide or insecticide in the extract or the raw material that's coming in. That has become very important now. Any raw material that goes into production, we need to know if there's any pesticide used or insecticide used. If they used it, is it within the limits? Yeah, so that is another equipment we added lately in the last couple of years. NMR is an absolute must because always dealing with the plant materials, we need to know what kind of chemicals we are looking at. Yeah. Yeah. And the capability is there with the major pharma companies, but none in the Nutra business. As we look at how these investments are being put to work for Sami Labs in Sabinsa, we made a trip to Nelamangala to get an overview of the fermentation process for growing the lactospore probiotic ingredients, and also to spend some time in the Biotechnology Center learning about supercritical carbon dioxide extraction. As we continue our journey here in India, today we're at the uh, Sami Labs Biotechnology Center where we have two uh, facilities, two operations right here on these beautiful grounds. Uh, first, we're going to learn about the fermentation process that produces the uh, lactospore probiotic that Sabinsa has brought to market. And second, right here on the grounds, we're going to tour their supercritical CO2 extraction facility where they're doing cutting edge uh, extracts of botanicals. So let's go in and see what we can learn. Lactospore, uh, the actual, um, the uh, strain is Bacillus cordylis. This is a useful probiotic bacteria which produces the desired form of the lactic acid, which is one of the advantages uh, compared to any other probiotics. For example, this produces predominantly uh, the L form of lactic acid, which is a desired form that can be taken into the body. Explain me how this all works. This yeah, yeah, fine, fine. So the culture what we maintain and we propagate into the sta various stages. Initially it goes to the inoculum preparation in the stage one. Then it goes to stage two where we actually have a higher volume. It goes for pulling of the inoculum to the fermentation where we have an entire fermentation for about 36 hours. The culture grows and it forms a spore. Then we do the harvesting into uh, a slurry. That slurry actually goes into the spray drying process. Once we have the spray drying process, we have a concentrated powder which goes for quality control tests. Once it is approved, then we take it for formulation. We dilute to the desired strength of 100 billion or 6 billion or 15 billion spores per gram. And it goes for blending, sifting, packing, goes to the quarantine. Again, it's tested as per the specifications. Then we clear it for the main finished goods. Then it goes for exports. Off it goes yeah. to the customer to come to the yes. market. Yes. Adjacent to the fermentation facility is the supercritical fluid extract facility where we will be learning about the cutting edge extraction work being done here. So I'll, I'll just brief about this uh, SAFE plant operations. SAFE stands for supercritical fluid extraction as you know. Uh, basically we use liquid carbon dioxide as a solvent. SCFE, supercritical fluid extraction, is the production of standardized extracts from medicinal herbs by supercritical carbon dioxide extraction, 
a very clean and green process where the carbon dioxide gas that is used is recycled for reuse and contained in a closed loop system. This is a huge investment from Sami Labs and Sabinsa to build this level of technology and automation and interesting to see the investments Dr. Majid speaks of coming to life through this innovative facility. We join the team in the SCFE control room to learn more. Basically, this is mission control, yeah. and you're in charge of, of all, yeah. It requires very minimal manpower for operations. Uh, the single operator, you know, the entire plant. Yeah, yeah. And all we need is uh, for the loading and unloading of the material is where we actually need the physical help. Person That's to come in and, and load it. But other than that, completely automated, completely yeah. enclosed, Absolutely. and all run from right here. As we continued our tour of this fascinating facility, we were able to see the results of this extraction process. So uh, what I have here is a highly concentrated extract of the tulsi, the holy basil, the plant uh, that we were able to inter interact with directly on the farm in Salem. And uh, but this is from that plant that's gone through this supercritical CO2 process, highly, highly concentrated uh, to uh, eventually become a product for a consumer to use. And I can tell you, it is highly concentrated. It smells just like the plant in the field, maybe a little stronger. As we come to the final stop on our journey, we head to the Sami and Sabinsa Dobaspet Curcumin and Coleus Manufacturing Facility. With the incredible success and scale Sabinsa has seen with curcumin, we're enthused to see the extraction process that yields curcumin from the turmeric root. We were joined by Mr. K. Parameswaran, unit head of Sami Labs Dobaspet facility, who has been with the company 15 years and leads the process there. As the number one ingredient at Sabinsa and Sami Labs, they have pioneered a large-scale continuous extraction process to meet the high demand for curcumin and coleus. The process begins with the arrival of bulk agricultural material from the farms, which is analyzed for identity and quality. Once approved, these materials are prepared for extraction. In the case of turmeric, the turmeric root fingers are first powdered and then pelletized as this is ideal for the continuous extraction process. The turmeric pellets are taken by conveyor to the extractor where they travel slowly through nine solvent sprayers taking eight hours to complete the extraction process. Once the extraction is complete, the solvent is removed using four dryers for evaporation. The closed system recycles the solvent. This extract then goes into tray dryers at 95 to 100 degrees Celsius to remove any remaining moisture. The dried curcumin is now ready for further processing to meet exact customer specs. Many customers opt for the granulated product as it is easier to use than curcumin powder, which is notorious for challenging cleanup work. From here, the material is tested for quality and purity, then packaged up for delivery to the customer and use in consumer products containing curcumin C3 complex. Many companies in our industry talk about the farm to finished ingredient or finished product process, but how many can literally outline what that process looks like? We got to experience this live here in India, and it was an eye-opening experience. The farms, research, science, technology, equipment, and most of all the people seem to make up the secret sauce of what Dr. Majid and his team have pioneered. Dr. Majid, any last words before we close down this great journey? I generally tell people, Science is dynamic, it, 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 it's continuous. Okay, you're never done. And, yeah, uh, you're never done. Right, yeah. yeah.